Happy New Year of living in the upper room. What I saw is something that will steady you, strengthen you, prosper you in the year 2024. God wants us to be so conscious, we are seated with Christ that we relax. And we face our challenges with the perspective of, with all the resources of God behind us, we handle it. What is God saying? I, I got a new problem! God says, you got a new sitting down to do. No, I must get up and do stuff! No, you must sit down and sit well. I'm going to handle it. But it takes faith for this position where you live in the upper room. Hi, this is Joseph Prince. I want to warmly welcome you to this week's Gospel Partner episode. If you are new here, my team and I would love to connect with you and send you weekly encouragements, pastoral insights, and exclusive content when you sign up for our Gospel Partner newsletter. I will also be sending you this special gift, so please look out for it in your email inbox. I pray that as you listen to today's sermon, you experience a fresh and personal touch from our Lord Jesus. God bless you. Good morning, church. Are you ready for some good news? Praise the Lord. We have some testimonies that have come in from our last Sunday's uh, time of ministering. And I pray that these testimonies will bless you and encourage you. Right, the first testimony comes to us uh, from a sister from Switzerland. And she writes that, I've been suffering from shingles for some time. I could feel the pain in my lower right abdomen, near my hip, all the way to the lower back. According to the doctor, it would take at least a month before my condition gets better. On Sunday, the 14th of January, Pastor Prince prayed over a condition of pain on the right side around the waist and mentioned that the person suffering from this condition hasn't been able to sit for long. Praise the Lord, as Pastor Prince prayed over the condition, the pain in my body went away instantly. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Wonderful testimony from Switzerland. And as she goes on to uh, conclude by saying, thank you for your ministry, Pastor Prince. You're truly a blessing to the world. Your teachings have set me free from a life of condemnation. And we pray that she'll be healed of the shingles as well. Amen? Praise the Lord. Next testimony is uh, from a sister from Singapore. And she writes that at the beginning of this year, I began exercising and after jogging, I experienced pain in my right knee. I wasn't sure if I had twisted it. During the first service on 14th of January, 2024, Pastor Prince called out my condition and I claimed the healing for myself. The following day, I went for a jog and my condition was completely healed. Praise God, that's not all. I could even jog three kilometers without stopping. God has increased my strength. Thank you, Jesus, for healing me and Pastor Prince for calling out my condition. Praise the Lord for healing this sister of a knee condition. <laughs> All right, next testimony is also from a sister from Singapore. Uh, she writes that, I attended the 11.30 a.m. service at the New Creation Church on 14th of January, 2024. On that day, Pastor Prince prayed for various conditions, including knee pain. I stood in faith for a friend who was suffering from this condition, but it did not occur to me to pray for my own knees. So selfless, this sister, you know? Wow. Which had been giving me pain for several years. I could not carry out certain workouts and I would also have to take deep breaths before I climbed the stairs due to the pain. The next day, I went to pick my daughter at a student care center. Along the way, I had to climb a long flight of stairs. However, to my surprise, I did not feel any pain in my knees. It suddenly dawned on me that my knees could have been healed during the service the day before. So, I tried to climb more stairs and did squats the next day. Amazingly, there's now no more pain or cracking sound in my knees. I'm so in awe of this miraculous healing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm sure you all are aware that somehow we've had quite a number of uh, testimonies pertaining to knee pain. And you know why God is healing many people of their knee pain? So that they can walk up to the upper room. Hallelujah. Need to walk up the flight of stairs, you know, to the upper room. Uh, right, the final testimony is a special one. It's from a brother from Singapore. And he writes that uh, I used to suffer from a heart condition known as mitral valve prolapse. After years of monitoring and testing, the doctor finally discharged me with a clean bill of health. Despite this, I continued to undergo annual health checkups, including electrocardiogram, also known as ECG, uh, and as a precautionary measure. measure. On 19th of October, 2023, after a routine stress ECG, 
I received a notification from the National Heart Centre indicating the need for another heart test in a few weeks' time due to abnormalities. This was unprecedented and raised concerns about the possibility of a deteriorating valve condition. Despite feeling anxious, I chose to believe God for health and wholeness. During the Sunday service on the 22nd of October 2023, Pastor Prince ministered healing, specifically addressing a heart condition and using the term valve. I knew it was God calling out for me. Tears welled up in my eyes as I turned to look at my wife, who was also tearing. I immediately claimed my healing and I shouted, Amen, when Pastor Prince declared that we would receive a new valve and a new heart. Over the following two weeks, I held on to Pastor Prince's teachings, rejecting negative thoughts and reminding myself that I am already healed and divine health is mine through Jesus' sacrifice. In November, I underwent the heart test and was informed that I should return for the results in two weeks' time. During the anxious wait, I would confess that I'm a child of God and Jesus has already taken away all my sickness and given me His divine health. I also found comfort in Pastor Prince's sermon on putting on the armour of God. When the results were finally out, the doctor told me that everything was fine and even said that I have a strong, healthy heart, all honour and glory to Jesus. Praise the Lord for these wonderful testimonies. And right now, church, let us welcome Pastor Prince. Happy New Year of living in the upper room. Amen. You know, when we were believing God for this place, I actually heard the Lord tell me this. This is the very first time ever He said this to me, years ago. We moved in in 2012, end of 2012. And uh, those years before that, you know, there was a lot of… Uh, let me just tell you this, it's not easy, all right? If uh, it, it could kill an average person just through stress alone at what we were supposed to even raise and… Uh, all the different hiccups that happened along the way and how uh, one thing led to another, unforeseen things and all that. But all the while, God gave me a word. Two words, actually. Number one, while we were going through the process, He says, sit still. Sit still until you know how the matter will recover. For the man, the Lord Jesus at the Father's right hand, will not be at rest until He has finished it. And that is a word from the book of Ruth. When Naomi, the mother-in-law, turned to the daughter-in-law, the Gentile girl from Moab, Jordan, who last night nearly beat Korea in the Asian <laughs> Cup. Today is Jordan. Moab, she is actually a Moabitess. But because she believes in the God of Naomi. She says, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Where you die, I will die. Imagine a daughter-in-law saying that to the mother-in-law. And she became the, one of the ancestors of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus came from her line, from her lineage. And that's what Naomi, her mother-in-law, advised her about the man who owned the field, a picture of our Lord Jesus Christ, the wealthy man called Boaz. She says, sit still, my daughter. Don't run about, don't be stressed, don't worry. Don't worry about even competition with other ladies and all that. Sit still until you know how the matter will fall. Because the man will not be at rest until he has finished. So if you sit still, if you rest, he will not be at rest concerning your affairs. That means he'll be working. Amen? That's when God began to show me even clearer that when you rest, God works. Now, if you are working, no point, God says, no point both of us working, okay? Because even if I help you, you will think it's you. You'll give part of the glory to me and part of the glory to you. No. God must have all the glory. Amen? So, I always say, if God wants to have all the glory, let God do all the work. Amen? And that's our true posture. Our life is to bring glory to God. 
but we are so proud, aren't we? Huh? We creatures are so proud. We always want to have something. We always want to do something. So when we rest, it is not laziness. It's not passivity. It is actually acknowledging God is the only one who can bring an end to this affair, who can finish this thing, amen? Who can bring a successful outcome. So that was the word God gave me. That's one word. And it brought me through the whole thing. All the while when things were difficult, I said, until he has finished, he will finish it. He will finish it. And if you think that we have so many, uh, what we call fundraising in terms of love offering in the church, you are wrong. There's another testimony altogether. One year, we only have once. Another year, none. And the money came in. Because he finished it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then the other word was this, and I want to share this with you. All right? The other word is this. He says to me, and I remember standing here when the, all the works were still being done and the people walking around with hard hats, you know, with their boots and all that, and I was wearing also and, uh, with, with Wendy, and we were walking through this place and all that, and, and I, I said, wow, this floor here is very interesting. It's the uppermost floor, in a sense. All right? Upper room. And the Lord said to me, then He will show you a large upper room. Furnished. And I never saw that upper room, the incident of Jesus, uh, the upper room where He celebrated the Lord's Supper with His disciples. The upper room was first told me by the Lord while believing God for this place to be furnished. But He says to me, He will show you a large upper room furnished and prepared. It's done deal. So before I saw the, the, the seats and all that, I really saw it furnished and prepared. So now he's telling us to live in the upper room. So I began to study and a lot of things that I discovered, I'm sure that you experienced this this past week if you look in the upper room. There are so many things to talk about in the upper room. Amen. And, and there are things that I've just learned from the Lord. I, I know those passages, I know those, sto uh, those stories, but I never saw the nuggets, the, the truths in those stories. Amen. And uh, what... What I, what I saw is something that will steady you, establish you, strengthen you, prosper you in these days that we are going to walk in, in the year 2024. Amen. This year, amen, the truths that we have. Again, the truths are eternal. You apply for 25, you apply for the year 26 as well, because it's true. But we, get, we must be established in these truths this year. That's the heart of God for us. Amen? So sit back, watch this. of living in the upper room. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You already are, but you're going to be established in it. Yeah. Amen. Every believer is. 
Psalm 91 says what? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Right? Right? For those who have ears to hear. Literally, he who yashaf in Hebrew. So a, a settlement in Hebrew is called moshaf. A settlement in Hebrew, in, 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 in Israel today, they call it moshaf. Which moshaf are you from? Moshaf is from yashaf. Yashaf means sit down. Literally, it's sit down. He who sits in the secret place of the Most High, Alion, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, Shaddai. And all the protection promises, the blessings and the long life is all there in Psalms 91. But if you look at Psalms 92, it opens up. You look at your Bible, okay? You can look at it. Um, if you have a, a Bible, most Bibles, they will have this. Psalms 92, a psalm for the Sabbath. It's a psalm for the Sabbath. Right? So ours is what? The Lord's Day, as we learn. All right? This psalm, they read this psalm every Sabbath. A psalm for the Sabbath. Do you see that? And it ends with the, those verses that the Lord sh uh, shared just now with us. Right? He wanted us to plant this in our hearts. Okay? Are you with me so far? By the way, every week you need fresh oil. And in that, in that chapter, Psalms 92, this same chapter, it also says, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Amen. So every time you come to the Lord's house, every week you come to the Lord's house, it's not for nothing. You're getting fresh oil. Amen. And again, the word fresh there, what word is it? Green. It means fresh, but literally is the word green. Green oil is extra virgin olive oil. It's the purest and the best. So every time we find that we, get, we feel like life is stale, uh, our emotions are dry, we are, we are spiritually dull, you know, it's time for us to have that fresh oil. So every time you come to God's house, you have fresh oil. Amen? 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 Amen. So notice I mentioned just now that the psalm before this, it says, He who sits in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's when all the promises, He will uh, uh, deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Amen. And from the noisome pestilence, He will cover you with feathers and under His wings you will take refuge. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence, the disease that walks in darkness. You don't even know who is the next victim. Amen. You shall not be afraid of all this. No evil shall befall you. He goes on to say later on, He gave His angels charge over you and there are many angels around. Right now, all, all over this place, all over the uh, venues that are watching this right now, where God's people are gathered together, angels gathered together. And the Bible used the word innumerable company of angels. Amen. And many a times we are pulled back from disaster. We are kept from, from heading into, into uh, danger because angels were involved. Amen. And in these last days, you need angels. Amen. So, sit down in the secret place. What is that? Sitting in the upper room. Sitting in the upper room. First of all, I'm going to share you right now how to sit in the upper room. Actually, you sit because you are seated. Living in the upper room is actually living where you are already established. Amen. Where God has established you. What you need to do is to establish yourself in your heart, your mind, your consciousness, your emotions. Amen. So let's look at this verse and see if the Holy Spirit can give you that revelation, okay? Follow me here in Ephesians 2. Ephesians chapter 2 says, But God who is rich in mercy because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. So we, we were all dead. Remember that. We were all dead in our sins. It is not just a matter of like, oh, I, 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 I didn't sin so bad. You know, I wasn't that kind of like, like that sister over there, you know, she got a very bad background, all right? Oh, no, listen, listen, listen. We are all dead in our sins, all of us. But God rich in mercy. I never find the, the Bible saying God rich in wrath. God has anger, but you never find God rich in wrath. God rich in mercy. And then you find this, for His great love wherewith He loved us. His great love wherewith He loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Amen? 
He made you alive together with Christ. When, when did that happen? When Christ rose from the dead. Actually, positionally, God put you in Him. Amen? It's like, um, you know, if you, if you take a pen and you put the pen in this Bible, okay, and you go to the Singapore River and you throw this Bible into the Singapore River, let's say, where is the pen? Inside the Bible. If someone saw the Bible, all right, and uh, it's just uh, below the surface and he picks it out, okay, that's resurrection, right? Where is the pen? Resurrected in the Bible. Amen? And if the Bible is brought to the highest place and the highest mountain in Singapore, ladies and gentlemen, let me announce to you, the highest mountain in Singapore is Mount Favor. Okay, la, Favor. Okay, all right? So we go to the highest, and then what do we have up there? The Bible. But don't forget, we talk about the Bible all the time, but who is in the Bible? You and I. So that's what happened. Right? Our identity, identity with Christ, God put us in Christ when He was crucified at the cross to put an end to our uh, old Adam so that a new creation arises. That's what it means to be born again. That means you are a resurrected spirit. You see, look up here. Uh, this one, that you're looking at my, my face and I look at your face, our body, this is not the real us. This is the house you live in. Everyone, Christian or non-Christian, when they die, they step out of this house. The Bible uses the word tabernacle, house, dwelling place. Your body is not you. You are a spirit and you live in a body. You live in a body and your spirit is breathed in by God. Amen. Your body comes from your parents, right? And in the womb, it comes together, but God breathed. So that part of you, because it's God's breath, it is eternal. That's why heaven and hell are places to house eternal spirits. Are you listening? All right. We cannot, in a way, we cannot stop living. Okay? But we cannot enter heaven with our sins. Amen. So Jesus came so that we, we can be born again. So when you're born again, what happens is that inside you become the new person. If you're blonde hair before you're saved, after you're saved, you're still blonde hair. Black hair before you're saved, you're still black hair. So it doesn't affect your physical, although, listen carefully, the spirit can affect the physical. The spirit of man will sustain his infirmity. It can affect your physical, okay? But you are the same. So it's not that part of you that's born again, it's your spirit. When Jesus comes again, we call it the rapture. Amen? Then our bodies will be completely changed. All right? Into a body that is forever. When you think about it, think about it. Salvation, when the rapture happens, anytime it can happen, when the rapture happens, that's the only thing that's left behind of our redemption. Only thing that we have not inherited yet is a new body. But this new body is a body that can never be subject to weakness, sickness, can never be diseased again, can, can never, never feel tired, there's no need for hospitals, can never feel bored, can never feel depressed, and it can never die. You think about it, what an amazing life is waiting for us. We won't be floating around, you know. We'll have bodies. I said we'll have bodies. So when God raised Christ from the dead, we are alive together with Christ. Where are you now? In Christ. Okay? But pastor, I'm here. I'm seated here at the star. No, my friend. The real you is seated with Christ above the stars. Way, way above the stars. Okay? So it's here, here, here it says... <laughs> He made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Reminding us again, it's all by grace. We didn't do this ourselves. And raised us up together. And raised us up together. You know, the, another passage in Ephesians says, God raised Christ, listen, listen. God raised Christ far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named is cancer a name above every name that is named. 
Amen. Anything you can name, any new disease that comes in, above, far above every name that is named, every power, every name that is named, far above, not just above, far above every principal power, every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And set him at his own right hand, far above all, all this. God set Christ down. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken unto us by His Son, whom He has appointed heir of all things, by whom also He made the worlds, who being the brightness of His glory and the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by Himself purged our sins, sat down. You see, the reason why Jesus sat down and why you see Him sitting down today at the Father's right hand is that He dealt with your sins once and for all. Hallelujah! Or else He will never sit down. Sitting down means your work is finished. He will never sit down if there's one sin left in your life. And when God forgave you your sins, where were you? Not born yet. So God lives outside time and space. The cross of Jesus Christ is outside time and space. It's for all those who ever lived before He came and all those who would live in the future. So all our sins are put there at the cross. When God says, I forgive you of all your sins, it is not, I forgive you today, but tomorrow fresh sins need fresh forgiveness. Fresh sins need fresh forgiveness. No, God doesn't doesn't look at events that pass by like this. God takes the, the, the helicopter view. If there's a parade, you know, you have seen parade, right? At Disney and all that, they have a parade. God takes the helicopter view. He can see the beginning of the parade and the end of the parade. God saw your entire life of sins when He put all your sins on Jesus Christ. Nothing takes God by surprise. So when the Bible says, having purged our sins, Jesus sat down. Amen. That means it's complete. There will never be a sin that rises up and, and Jesus have to stand up and says, I forgot to take that away. It's done. So whenever you see Jesus seated up there, amen, and you see in the Spirit, just know that He's not sitting down because He's God, although He is. He's not seated down because He's the Son of God, although He is. He's not seated down because the Father honours Him, although that is true. He's seated having purged our sins. Amen. <sighs> Isn't that tranquilizing for our souls, wow. for our conscience? It gives us peace. Amen? But best of all, this far above, raising Christ far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, is not only true for Jesus. God made His identity, His, His whole history start, our history start with Christ at the cross. We are crucified with Christ. God raised us a new man in Christ. Amen. When God raised Christ, just like the pen in the Bible, God raised Christ, God raised us in Him. And when God says, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool, we all sat down with Christ. That's where you are right now. And my friend, that is seated in the upper room. That is seated in the heavenly places. In fact, if you look at your Bible carefully, the word places is actually in italics. That means the translators don't have it in the original. They, They added it in to help to help. Sometimes it it helps, sometimes it deters actually, you know, but don't worry about the uh, italics. Italics is not in the original, but the original says heavenly, raised us up together and made us sit together. He made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The word heavenly is the word api urenos, which is actually api is upper, upper. The urenos is actually heavens, is the upper heavens. So there are three heavens, the Bible talks about three heavens. Number one, like the devil, he's the prince of the power of the air. What is that? This uh, atmosphere, atmospheric heaven you see around you, the stars, all that, I mean the, the moon and all that. Not, not the stars actually, but, but uh, this atmospheric heaven. The stars and the moon and the galaxies and all that, they are in a place called second heaven, universe. Where is God's throne? In the brightest of all heaven. All right, it's above that. You cannot see with a naked eye. No microscope can can look into that. It's beyond that. That's where those who are dead in Christ straight away, 
they are there. Some of them who came back says, angels carry them. All right to the Father's presence. Your loved ones are more alive than you think. You cry for them, actually they cry for you. When they realize what heaven is like and they look down and see what we are struggling with, we rejoice over the next smartphone that comes. And they are crying, oh my goodness. The little petty joys that we call joy. Nothing wrong with smartphones. I didn't mention the brand. <laughs> Amen? We rejoice over gold and silver. And down there, they use it for street. So the priorities, it's like, you know, we can't imagine, right? Apostle Prince, are you in heaven? There's no more this, no more that, no more this. Whatever you want to put, no more. Okay, let me tell you this. Last time you don't know also, what? before God created you. What is pleasure, what is pain, you don't know also. Right? But God saw you in mind and God created your, your lips and your tongue and all that, right? To taste different, to enjoy different food. If God gives you one taste that you never know, so what? Am I right? Come on. God, God has your pleasure and your true fulfillment and your joy in His heart because why? He loves you. So you can't imagine life in heaven, the joys and all that, greater than earth. You can't imagine, because you're so used to earth. It reminds me of someone looking at the ant. And you tell the ant, hey, poor ant, you're eating junk. All right? That, sh that, sh that sugary, that syrup has been thrown there for some time already. It, it's, 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 it's stale. Hey, hey, stop, stop eating from there. And if, if the ant can talk back, the ant says, what do you have to offer me? I got fresh things up here. Sorry, this is my life. I'm so frightened. I look up there, I cannot understand. It's too high. It's too bright. I like dark things. I like smelly things. <laughs> Amen. I like, I like uh, dirt. You know, I like the kind of thing. I'm used to this kind of life. And you feel for the end, don't you? You don't feel. You just kill the end. Right. <laughs> so imagine if the end, if I can become an end and I, and I talk to the end, and we both fellowship and I tell him there's a better life. Amen? And all of a sudden, the end becomes a man and, and he said, my goodness, my goodness, I never realized this kind of life exists when I was ant. <laughs> now this, they have ant men, so it spoils the illustration a little bit, <laughs> you know? And, and uh, ant man, you know? So, but can you imagine? Now we are human beings here. We can't imagine the life in heaven. I don't know why I said all that, but I think the Lord wants to encourage you because uh, the end is near. When I say the Lord is coming for us, He's coming for us anytime. Might be this year. Might, might just be this, this month. Amen. We will always live expectant. And you know what? What you're going to receive? The only thing, the only thing that will change is our bodies. That's when, that's when it comes to pass. Death has lost its sting. All right? The fulfillment of Jesus did it at the cross and His resurrection, but it is effective in our life when we are raptured. Amen. We have a new body. But pastor, I'm so scared of heights. In that new body, you're not scared of heights. Amen. And, and the pleasures of heaven cannot be taken in this mortal body. It must be in the new body. Can you imagine? Never dying again never feeling tired, never going to the doctor and say, I got, I think my blood pressure went up. Amen? It's a real life. And okay, how do we live in the upper room? But the Lord wants us to live constantly in the upper room. So where are you now? Present tense. Seated together with Christ. All right? Sit together in the heavenly places in Christ. Can you see that? Can you see that? So have you been raised? Past tense. Were you crucified? Yes, past tense. Were you quickened from the dead? Yes. Happened to you, right? Past tense? Yes. Were you raised up, raised up all the way? Happen, happened already? Yes. So where are you now? Seated. Where? In the upper heavenlies, the third heaven where God dwells. His throne is. Brilliance beyond the excellence of shining and radiance of the sun. Beyond all that. Brighter than the sun. Amen? We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Now, when we live Christian life, listen carefully, we live like this. We come down and attend to earthly matters 
but our spirit is heavenly. What's the effect? How to describe this? It's like if an angel came down, okay, you drama lovers and all that, um, right? Because <laughs> middle of the night, you know, when the, even the owl is like falling asleep, really. and uh, whoo, whoo, people are still watching, you know, <laughs> that, that one is amazing. That's really amazing, you know. I see some guilty faces. <laughs> I, I, I just think that, uh, okay, anyway, dramas have all kinds of shows, right? Sometimes I just read the subtitles. I, I find it so comical sometimes. Like, oh, you know, uh, uh, it's like this person goes back in time, you know? Or oh, this, this going to the future, right? Oh, this one is actually an angel. He's from a star. He comes down. Scully, he falls in love. Must fall in love, of course. Or else who wants to watch? So the angel comes by, he falls in love. You know? But then he leaves. His life is he's like a human being, but he's not a human being. You know? It's like there is something heavenly about him. Uh, he's not petty. If anything, you can say he's like princely. He comes from another world. Amen. And he has powers. Wow. He has powers. Then one day he disappeared, you know? He went back to the star and everyone cries, <laughs> right? Something like that. I remember watching this uh, sometime uh, far f- years ago and I think it's one of the silliest… Okay, oh, don't get angry at me. <laughs> okay, never mind. I, I revoke that. Child of God, don't forget who you are. You are not a drama lover. You are Christ lover. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, so… Just to give you an idea, what God wants us to do is this. We don't, we don't, we don't live our Christian life, all right, trying to be patient, trying to be kind, trying to do this, trying to be humble, trying. That's where people fail. What God wants us to do is to live life already seated. We are already complete in Christ. We are righteous in Christ. We are so close to the Father's right hand that God wants us to be aware of that. That's living in the upper room. God wants us to be so conscious that we are seated with Christ, that we relax in our approach to life. Does that mean in our earth suit, (laughs) let's call this earth suit, okay? That you and I are wearing our bodies on earth. Does that mean that we we won't face troubles? We won't face situations? No, we, we won't face situations, but our inner man is seated with Christ and we face our challenges with the perspective of, with all the resources of God behind us, we handle it. Amen. Amen. There was once, I, I, I remember uh, hearing this testimony. I think I read this testimony um, somewhere many, many, many years ago about a man of God who came to town. And in those days, they would just go to uh, uh, different towns to preach. And there was a young man waiting for him. And after he finished his preaching, the young man came up to him to share with him, said, to unburden his heart, some very shameful outbreaks in his life. And um, in many, many areas, especially in the area of lust and all that. And he says, I try my best. As a Christian, I try my best not to watch, not to do this, not to do that. I did my very best, but somehow I cannot do it. Why is that so? Why is that so? And the, the man of God just smiled, looked at him and said, you're approaching the whole thing wrong. You do not know who you are in Christ. You're approaching like a human being trying to suppress all his sinful tendencies, trying to overcome his bad habits, and therefore you are doomed to repeat it. Why? There's no hope in the flesh. In the upper room, when Jesus says, when Jesus got up and washed his disciples' feet, Peter says, Everything that is wrong, three times. First of all, the flesh. It shows the flesh, our flesh. So forward, like he insulted the Lord's work. Are you washing my feet? Okay. Then the Lord says, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. All right? Right? He said, you will never wash my feet. Now before the Lord says, you have no part with me, he said, you'll never wash my feet. Now he says, he denied the Lord his service of love. Okay? And he thinks it's because, you know, I'm doing the Lord a favour. Then the Lord says, if I don't wash you, you have no part with me. Then he says, 
Look at the flesh. Wash not only my feet, my hands, my head. <laughs> then Jesus, Jesus says, he that is completely clean, who has a bath, only need to wash the feet. We're going to study all this soon. Okay? So the flesh is like that. I think it's too forward, like the horse, or too reticent, like the mule. It's never in sync with God. So in the washing of the feet, you learn to be, you have part with me. Washing the feet doesn't make you part in me. That is when you're safe. That is the bath already. That bath is a new birth. Amen. You're completely clean. You only have to wash your feet. It's a message for believers. You're completely clean. You only need to wash your feet. Your daily, your, your daily walk get contaminated, right? You don't wash your feet. What's going to happen? Jesus says, you have no part with me, not in me. If you say in me, it means you're not saved. But no part with me. With me what? You either go too fast or you're too slow. You cannot flow with me. And, and, and the Christian life is a life of flowing in the Spirit. The Old, old Testament, Old Covenant, Old Covenant is this. Just, this will help you understand. Old Covenant are written codes like the law to be obeyed. New Covenant is the Holy Spirit to be followed. Amen. One more time. Old Covenant are written codes to be obeyed, or else there's penalty. New covenant is the Holy Spirit to be followed. You understand that? You understand. You not live in two covenants at the same time, causing confusion. Okay, are you with me so far? So this man of God says, you're approaching the whole thing wrong. You are actually crucified. That part of you you don't like, that's causing you trouble, depression, and problems, and, and causing you to sin again and again, like bullying you, is your flesh. But you need to realize you have been crucified with Christ. It's gone. It sounds so loud, sounds so real, but it's gone. It's like the feeling you get when you get off the boat. This is mine now. When you get off the boat, right? You still feel like you're going up and down. You ever had that feeling? Yeah. Amen? It's all in your consciousness. It's not real. You're no more on the boat. So you're no more on the boat of the flesh. You are not in the flesh. You are now in the spirit. But the flesh will still have its old habits, old ways of thinking. All right, so he told the young man this. I want you to pray like this with me, okay? Follow me in this prayer. He said, Father, thank you that I've been crucified with Christ. Then the young man followed line by line. He said, died with Christ, died with Christ, raised with Christ, raised with Christ, and I'm now seated with Christ. And all the while he's thinking, what has this got to do with my sins, my bad habits? I'm now seated with Christ. I'm now seated with Christ far above everything else. I'm with Christ. He said, pray this prayer every day. Thanking God. No, it's not a prayer of asking. It's already done. It's a reality. Heavenly reality. Amen. You just have to thank God. Every day you're seated with Christ. Well, some years passed. The man of God was making his circuit preaching in different, different parts of America. And then finally, he came back to that town. And he was preaching. As he was preaching, a young, fine-looking man came in and sat. All of a sudden... Of all the people there, this man of God said that he was drawn to that, to that young man. And uh, after that, after preaching, you know, he just felt like he was drawn. He was, the guy was glowing. So at the end, the, the guy came up and the guy looked at him. He looks radiant. It's been a number of years now. And the young man said, you don't recognize me, right? He says, no. He says that I'm that young man. He described, he prayed for a lot of people. I'm the young man who came to you with this kind of, he said, oh, I remember now. And he asked him, how has it been? He says, Victory. Amen. Victory. Not only that, he said, even before he said it, he could see the air of princeliness. Like he comes from heaven. Like Jesus. Even though he was dressed in a garb of that of a Galilean. Right? Probably some people say white and blue or whatever. Outward garb. But yet you feel like you're in the presence of a prince. Amen. When he speaks, things happen. When he spoke, demons depart. Amen. He spoke to the winds. The winds caught out and obeyed. He's a prince, a king in our midst. There's something royal. It's got nothing to do with your crown, nothing to do with your clothes, nothing to do with your name, title. You might have a name called prince, but who cares? Amen. <laughs> all right. Nothing to do with all that. Amen. Nothing to do with all that. It's got to do with something that exudes from within. Amen. And I've seen that happen. 
I've seen that. So we live our Christian life in this position. All right? Every good man of God will tell you that. We don't pray up to heaven. Actually, we are praying, cooperating with God many a times. And talking about prayer, in the upper room, you learn one thing. Jesus says, up till now, you have asked nothing in my name. And that's why people get riled up when I say the Lord's Prayer is a prayer that's perfect for its time during the uh, earthly walk of Jesus when He came to present first the kingdom. He didn't come to tell them, look, I'm the Messiah. I'll die on the cross and, and uh, through my blood, your sins will be washed. Israel rejected Him not as the Saviour. Re Israel rejected Christ as the King of Israel. That was their sin. Jesus said, you'll not see my face until you say, Baruch Haba Hashem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, they never said, we reject him as our saviour. Read carefully, the synoptic gospels. He came to present the kingdom. In other words, if Israel accepted Jesus Christ as the king, heaven will come to earth. He will rule from Israel and from Israel all over the world. But alas, Israel rejected he came unto his own, and his own received him not. That's referring to Israel. But as many, all of us, as receive him, to them gave him power to become sons of God. So that was a physical kingdom that Jesus came to offer them. Promise to Daniel in prophecy, and also to uh, uh, David, the, your line will continue forever. It's a kingship. It's a literal kingdom. It's a real kingdom. But Israel rejected so the kingdom is now, the physical kingdom is held in abeyance. In the second coming of Christ, not the rapture. The rapture is only for the church. It's called a mystery. But go beyond that. After the rapture starts seven years of tribulation on earth. During the time, the book of Revelation, people will identify each other by numbers. NRAC number? What's your NRAC number? Okay, stand in line, pick your number. This is your number. Wait for your number. People identify each other with numbers in the end time. In the end times, things will happen in Jerusalem and all the nations of the world will see something happen. How come? How come the, all the nations of the world, you know, like many skeptics today who don't believe the Bible, there were skeptics in 18th century, skeptics in 17th century, and they will say like, the Bible is so full of fantasy. They laugh at the book of Revelation. It talks about the two witnesses in Jerusalem. And the Bible says certain events will happen there involving the two witnesses. And it says all the nations of the world will see it. <laughs> Bible, fantasy. Well, no one is laughing now about such a thing happening because yesterday, Jordan nearly beat Korea. And I happened to see parts of it from my little Singapore. I saw something that happened in Qatar. Qatar is not Sentosa, you know. Even I cannot see Sentosa, huh? All right? It's not with my physical eyes. Well, no one is laughing now. Amen? Are you listening? The Bible talks about an object that will speak with intelligence, but it's not a human being in the last days. The Antichrist will use this object. It's very intelligent. Right? But it's not a human being. I rest my case. I won't tell you who it is. All right? But when Jesus comes, that's the rapture. All right? Then you can mark it from, we're, we're all in heaven. We're not waiting for the Antichrist. No, no, no. God will rapture us first. Then the worst things will happen on earth. Terrible things for seven years, tribulation. Then at the end of it, Jesus will come for Israel before they're completely destroyed, Jesus will come, all right, as King of kings and Lord of lords. This time, He will re-establish the kingdom of which the Sermon on the Mount is part of. You see? But during this time, before that, we are living in the church age, the dispensation of grace. So the Lord's Prayer, strictly speaking, is, during, is, is a kingdom prayer. And we call it the Lord's Prayer. It could be the disciples' prayer because the disciples ask Him to teach Him, teach them how to pray. So don't you think if Jesus taught you how to pray that prayer, the disciples were praying that prayer probably every single day? Do you think so? If Jesus, they said, please teach us how to pray. Even disciples of John know how to pray. Then Jesus taught them the pattern of how to pray. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He, he taught them how to, nothing wrong with praying that prayer today also. Amen? If the Lord's prayer, listen carefully, don't you believe that they'll be praying that prayer every day? How come in the upper room, Jesus turned around and told them, until now you have asked nothing in my name. Peter can say, wait, 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 Lord. You taught us how to pray the Lord's prayer. Isn't that asking in your name? Up till now, you have asked nothing from the Father in my name. There is a prayer that's beyond any other prayer you have prayed. Even those by the prophets in the old covenant and all that. The prayer we pray is not like that kind of prayer. When I pray for you all just now, notice I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's so much more there. There's so much more there. There's a prayer we ask the Father in my name. There's a place where you ask anything in my name. Listen, you ask the Father in my name. He, the Father, will give it to you. There's another one in the upper room where he said, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. What's the difference? Akan datang. Coming soon. <laughs> Amen. Also in the upper room, he taught them, he taught them this. The rapture. For the first time, the rapture is heard. We thought it was from 1 Thessalonians when Paul said, uh, this I say by the word of the Lord about the rapture. But actually, Jesus alluded to it. In the upper room, I told you what, upper room are teachings of the epistles in its embryonic form. What did Jesus say? In my Father's, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Where I am, there you may be. Notice, I go and prepare. My father's house are many mansions. Hey, by the way, it's not a little hut house. It's mansion. Mansion. In my father's house are many mansions. Singaporeans understand this like that, no problem. You don't need Greek for this, this, this uh, interpretation. Mansion, they understand, amen? I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. Notice, no seven years of tribulation mansion. No, some people believe that rapture, uh, the, uh, rapture is nothing more than second coming. That means we are going through the great tribulation. No, Jesus says, I come again and what? Receive you to myself. No mention of the Antichrist. He just straight from heaven, receive you unto myself, back to heaven. But what about the Antichrist? What about the, the great tribulation prophesied by Isaiah, Jeremiah, the prophets in the Old Testament, Daniel? Where, where, where? All those, it will come to pass. But in the upper room, these are truths for the church. Father and his family. Are you with me so far? Okay, so the upper room opens with, I'm bringing this to a close. So, you're enjoying this so far? You understand? So you find that your life, for example, how do you apply this, you know? You've forgotten who you are. The problem with all of us, we have forgotten who we are. Okay? Even a prince, a real prince of a family, if he's brought up from young, to think that he's not a prince, to think like a beggar, and to beg in the streets, Although in reality he's a prince, he will live and think like a beggar. We have a lot of stories about this. I don't know, uh, I think Indian drama also have, you know, this kind of thing. I think, I think all kinds of drama, you know, we have a uh, former prince, you know, that kind of thing. Even like uh, fairy tales have the prince and the pauper. So it's in the mentality. What we are doing when we come to the Word of God is to renew our minds to who we already are in Christ. Amen? It's a whole lot of difference. When I see myself seated with Christ, let's say I have a problem with anger, bitterness, and whatever, all right? What do I do? I don't try to suppress it. That's the worst you can do. To suppress it is to cause it to explode. It's a reverse thing that will happen. What do I do? I just rest. I just rest. Why? It's finished. This anger problem is no more. I rest. My perspective is that it's far below my feet. I've died to sin already. I'm raised to Christ. I'm seated with Christ. You take this posture, what's going to happen? Why, do you, why does God want to rest and sit down? Because He has a show for you. Watch this. Look at verse 6, that we are seated 
and raised up together and made us sit together for what purpose? Comma, verse 7, that in the ages to come, He might show. I told you, He's a show coming. So that in the ages to come, all we'll see in front of us is not the Antichrist, you know, tribulation or whatever. We are seeing all this happen from the top down. Are you listening, people? From the top down, okay? In the ages to come, what we see? He might show us the exceeding riches of His grace. In His kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. So when you are seated with Christ, all right, you must have this, this posture, okay? Can I sit down? Tell you, it's a very scriptural position okay, in the Bible. The Bible says that before Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus sat down. And there were multitudes there. You know? It's not that you sit down because there are a row of 12 people in front of you, right? It's easy, right? But there's a multitude. But the Bible says, first thing he did, sit down. I'm waiting for preachers everywhere to obey that. Because <laughs> nothing better than the exemplar. Amen? Right? So he sat down. Good excuse. Okay, so he sat down. To sit down with Christ means what? Your word carries power. Watch what you say. Don't use death. Don't say, oh, die la, die la. Say, live la, live la, live la. All right? I told you last week, all right? Don't say, I'm dying for the piece of cake. If you're dying, you cannot eat it. Say, you're living for the piece of cake. So, why is it so um, um, pervasive that every language has death program already in the language. Why is it so? Why is it so that every language, mati la, mati la, daya, daya, siya, siya, kaput la, kaput, German, kaput. Kaput. Marajaya, all kinds of, it's all death, 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 death. Why? Do you think it's the devil? He cannot kill you directly, but you can kill you. Because the Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. So let's say God says, sit down with me. Do you know you're on the throne? Yes. Do you know that what it means to be on the throne? Yes. You are enthroned with me. We are joined as with, you are joined air with me, Jesus says. Okay. Yes, Lord. Another thing, my word says in Ecclesiastes, where the word of a king is, there is power. I understand. And all things are yours. <laughs> That's so funny, I feel like dying. <laughs> so, that's the problem with us. It's so part of us that when we say it, like, oh, come on, don't split hairs over words and all that. Words can kill. Words can bring you to court. And depending on words spoken against who even, the crime is commensurate with the dignity and the op- office of the person that you slander. Speak life to you. So now, whatever you say will come to pass. Yes. Amen. Thank God, with long life, God satisfies me. My family is blessed. Hallelujah. This coming week, the Lord has gone ahead and make the crooked places straight. And in spite of what you see happen in front of you, things are not, there will be bad events and all that. But in your spirit, you are disassociated. You must disassociate, you are, you are in the heavenlies. And when you disassociate yourself, you can have a right perspective of that problem. You won't be crushed. But if you are a normal person with all the rest, all on the same ground, earthward, sensual, earthbound, logical, right? You cannot have that wisdom that comes from above. So we live life heaven, uh, earthwards, from heaven, earthwards. Don't live life from earth, heavenward, which a lot of Christians are doing. You think about it when you pray, right? How do you pray? You, Father in heaven. All right, that's taught in the Lord's Prayer at that time. It's true. He wanted them. You can see them, Israel, as disciples. They were disciples, but they're not saved. He has not yet died. That's why in the Sermon on the Mount, there's not one word about salvation. It was a perfect sermon for the kingdom, which that sermon will be fully implemented when Jesus comes again in the kingdom and will come with Him. So, 
you think about it. When you are in this position with Christ, what is your posture? What do you look forward to? Don't become earthward. Ah, oh, this coming week, I got a lot of things to do. Ah, oh, I feel very stressful. I, I feel I got to, you know, go higher. I even shouldn't say go higher. I just say, know where you are. You are in Christ. The attempt to go higher, all right, denotes that you are not where you are. So don't even try to go higher. And when you pray, have you realized that you pray, Father in heaven, it's like, even you, you have lost before you pray. Why? You are implying distance. But there's no distance. That's why your prayers don't get answered because there's no faith released and you're believing the wrong thing. Father in heaven, Tiana! <laughs> you look up, God, hear my prayer! Okay? Now, I look up. I do look up. But I look up to someone who is so close to me. He taught me that. One time I was praying, and I said, like God is so far away, I look up. Father in heaven. Now you don't have to look up all the time. The Bible says, Thou shalt look up and then pray. Or thou shalt close thy eyes and pray. Nowhere says close your eyes. And I encourage you not to pray when you're driving, doing that. Okay? <laughs> you might just close it for a long time. <laughs> so, so we, I say, Father. Then he says, why, why do you see me so far away? He rebuked me. He correct me. In his love. Say, how do I do it? Your prayers don't get answered because you start off from the wrong premise. It's an unscriptural premise. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He cannot bear witness with this lie that I'm far away. So I didn't mean it too, Lord. Then he says, pray. From now on, pray. All right? Let your words be, be few. Knowing, knowing. More importantly is this. Knowing I'm listening. Amen. Knowing. And you must know that you're so close to me even at my right hand. Amen. So how do you pray to someone who is, who is so near? Right? Now, I'm going to say loud. Sometimes I pray loud. Right? Sometimes I pray soft. It's not the loudness. Of the... Pray in your spirit, your conscious. I say, Father, you must know He's listening, Ray. I'm like, Father, Father, Father. You know, not, not kind of prayer. Father, got it. He's there, Ray. Jesus stood before Lazarus' tomb. Father, right? Someone can come to you. Hey, God is so far away up there. A Jew will say, a Jew who believe what they believe at the time, God is in his heaven, you are on earth. This is what you could tell him. But Jesus says, Father. Next thing you know, Lazarus! And Lazarus came out. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. There's this, this personal relationship. And the world is looking for that. Amen? They're not looking for formality. Oh, Father in heaven, thou, that makes all... You know, when my son asked me something, right? Abba, ask for something straight away. <laughs> you know, uh, Hebrew people, right? They say, Abba. Miss a child would say, Abba. Even an older man in his 60s or whatever, he has a father, elderly father, he'll say, Abba. Okay? If it's my father, you, they will say Avi. So what happened when they did this video, right? You know, the father says, Benny. So what happened? They, they, I, I told them the format, you know, the idea and all that. They came back. They told me, we prepared already. The, the prodigal son will say, Abba. Then the father will say, Aben. Ben is son, right? Aben. I said, Aben. <laughs> so I, read, I saw the video, Aben. I said, where did you get Aben from? Because Abba. Abba is Abba. Must be Abena. I said, You think this is Chinese, a boy? In Hebrew, when they say my son, they will say Benny. Benny. Benny means my son. That's where your name Benny comes from. Benny. Benny means my son, not Aben. That's Chinese, a boy. Okay? So watch this. There are two attitudes. I'll close with this. All right? Listen carefully. 
take this home with you, okay? And this is the position. You are seated with Christ. When you pray, you pray in the sense of family closeness, in the consciousness He loves you. His great love by which He loved us, He made us sit together with Christ. We are there. No one can remove our position. Satan cannot remove that position, your position. So two attitudes. Number one, and I don't have time to do all this, uh, to show you all the scriptures, but listen to me, okay? It's all in there in the Bible. The first one, to show in front of you, what can you expect when you're seated with Christ? There's a show coming. He's going to show you the exceeding riches of His grace. And, and you know what? Listen carefully. It's not just when you die and go to heaven, He will show you. While you're living here with your spirit in the, seated in Christ, He's going to show you. all the favours He has for you. This year, you know what's happening? He will show you the exceeding riches of His unearned, undeserved, unmerited favour for you. And let's not worry about who says what, who says this, or you listen to prophecies that people thought bad things happening this, this year, or prophets say this. Uh, listen, the Bible says when you're seated with Christ, you will only see exceeding riches of His grace. Doesn't mean there's no persecution. Doesn't mean, in fact, in the upper room, there's a promised persecution. Jesus says it will happen. He even taught us how to respond to it in the upper room. All right? There'll be persecution, especially if you are a believer. But your posture in responding to it, difficulty in all that, is that you're seated with Christ. And your family identity is royalty, but not royalty to dominate people. Your power is not to dominate people, but to break their bondage, to destroy their sin, to cast out the demon that's oppressing them, to heal the sick. That's the authority you have. And like Jesus, you can be dressed normal, look normal, but there's something about you that's radiant, that is heavenly. That, my friend, is the Christian life. If your version of holiness is such that there's a morose face, look like baptized in Tom Yum juice, right? <laughs> That's not Christianity, all right? Because the Bible says to Jesus, Hebrews chapter 1, God has anointed you, Father telling the Son, God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Your fellows there is not the angels. God don't, don't call the angels fellows. Your fellows, missed together, joined heirs with Christ. Who are the fellows? All of us. And Jesus is the happiest. He's anointed with the oil of gladness above your fellows. We rejoice in all these things that we are learning. But you know something? His joy exceeds ours. He loves to love you more than you love to be loved. You enjoy hearing the truths of the finished work. He enjoys telling you, revealing to you. Amen. And that's why the Bible, to start off, we will just tell you this, okay? Okay, you saw that? I'll try again, okay? <laughs> How fast you uh, get up, okay, is how young you are. Amen. Amen. So let me give you another posture and we'll close with this. Seated with Christ is also this. The Father says in Hebrews chapter 1, To which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Right? So we end off here with what God said to me in the beginning. Sit still until you know how the matter will fall. Now, the Father, in Hebrews chapter 1, the last two, second, last verse, it says, sit on my right hand until I make, I make your enemies your footstool. Yes. So, would that be spoken to us as well? Yes, we are in Christ. What is God saying? I, I got a new problem. God says, you got a new sitting down to do. No, I must get up and do stuff. No, you must sit down and sit well. I'm going to handle it. Uh, uh, but it looks so big. Not bigger than me. Sit down. Uh, but Lord, if I don't handle it, I don't need you to handle it. You'll make a mess of it. Sit down. Sit down. Because I love you. Sit down until I make all your enemies, you can call it what you want. It's not a human being, okay? The one that speaks against you and all that, he's a precious jewel on the breastplate of Jesus. 
I will not see him otherwise. The person who come against you at work, who come against you here and there, they are not your enemies. But what their schemes are, their, their things are, right? God will not cause it to prosper. Those are your enemies. The hatred is the enemy. Disease is also an enemy to God. Amen. God says, all the problems here. Marital conflict, your wife is not your enemy. The strife is the enemy. All the spirits the devil has signed against your marriage is the enemy. But God promised, sit down until I make all your enemies your footstool. And if I got another hour, I'll preach to you how marriages are breaking down because the husband is not rested inside. He brings home this stress and worry and then pours out. His wife uh, may not understand where he's been at or what he's thinking of or his mind is lost. And then he, he snap out at her. It's nothing personal, but it's no excuse. Many a times it's because it starts with not resting. But it takes faith for this position. Will you live in the upper room? Will you be positioned and established where God has positioned and established you? Then I'll tell you this. You will see one thing happen after another. One after another, your enemies be made your footstool. Because you are in Christ. And you'll see something else. You will see something else in all the days ahead of you. The exceeding riches of His favour, His grace. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I preach myself happy. Amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Thank you, Lord. If you have never put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. What I shared just now is for believers. And all this is true based on the Word of God. And if that is you, pray this prayer with me right now. You say, Pastor, I'm going to put my trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved in your house. Pray this prayer from your heart. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, thank You so much for the gift of Your Son, my Lord Jesus Christ, who left heaven's glory, came down to earth to die on that cross for all my sins. And on the third day, you raised him from the dead and you raised me in him and you made him to sit at your right hand and you made me to sit together with him. Here I am now today. Thank you, Father. Jesus Christ is my Lord forever. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Stand to your feet. Lift your hands all across this place. Don't worry, we are good on time. Hey, y'all, give me some, you know. Ah. Okay, thank you, thank you. The longer y'all do, uh, the longer y'all go. Uh. Okay, lift up your hands all across this place. This coming week, from the perspective of being seated with Christ, you are blessed with all blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And I declare in the name of Jesus that your lives and the lives of your loved ones are protected throughout this week. In the name of Jesus, I declare that whatever you do prospers and all weapons and the scourge of tongue against you will not prosper throughout this week. May you find yourself by the power of the angelic host that God has sent to keep charge over you. Be at the right place at the right time. May the power of the Holy Spirit teach you all things and guide you into all truths, even the truths that God wants to show you in this upper room. And may the Holy Spirit show you things to come, even in the future even this year, as you listen to Him and continue to live in the upper room. In the name of Jesus and all the people said, Amen. God bless you. We'll see you again. Introducing the new Joseph Prince app. We've designed the new app with one thought in mind, to make connecting with the Lord daily simple and easy for you.
Through the guided daily experience, spend time in His presence and build a habit of starting your day right with the Word of God. Let's pray this short prayer together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your deep love and detailed care for me. I'm grateful that you value me so much and that you know even before I ask what I really need. Help me to remember that no problem or need is too small for you to handle. I bring all my cares to you, knowing that you are attentive to every little detail of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, everyone is looking to amuse themselves. They are engaged in social media because there's a constant craving to be amused. Musing is opposite from amusement. Muse means you are silently contemplating, meditating, so shut down everything else that will distract you. Spend time, bring up the Word of Scripture, meditate on it, and the Word of God will release health, life, prosperity into your life. Thanks to the support of our gospel partners, the daily experience is now free for everyone. Try it now on the brand new Joseph Prince app. Download the new app today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, but don't go just yet. If you'd like to receive prayer, share your testimony, or find out more about Gospel Partner, just click the link on this screen. If not, I'll see you in the next episode.